see more history tonight. The stage is set in Richmond for the Colonial Athletic Association Championship. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Dominic Jones, CAA Player of the Year, two-time first-team All-Conference, leads VCU against George Mason. They won three matchup. Championship week hitting full stride. Reese Davis here along with Digger Phelps. You know, Jeff Capel, coach of VCU, part of the number one moment in ESPN college basketball history. It would be a great week if he could get his team to the dance as well. What are the keys to this game? Oh, when you look at VCU, you've got to be concerned about having 16 turnovers a game. That's been their average, so that's one thing George Mason can look for. But on the other side of it, George Mason had a negative rebounding margin all season. Board play could be a plus for VCU. Interesting matchup. Winner probably ends up with a 14 seed in the NCAA tournament. And not only are you filling out the field, you're projecting seeds oh, now, absolutely. too. Oh, absolutely. Why not? It's that gotta... time. It's this week. Well, it is this week, and it is time to go out to Richmond and check out and see who will come out of the CAA. We will have four bids filled today. Night, three of them here on ESPN. Digger and I will be here to keep you up to date on everything. George Mason and Richmond ready to go. Well, thanks, Reese. We welcome you to Richmond, Virginia, where Championship Week presented by 7UP continues tonight. From the Richmond Coliseum, the Colonial Athletic Association title game features the number one seed and regular season champion, Virginia Commonwealth Rams, taking on the number three seed, the Patriots of George Mason. How did they get here? Well, Virginia Commonwealth dismantled Old Dominion by 17 points in the semifinals. They shot 65% from the field. George Mason beat two-time and defending conference champion UNC Wilmington by 14. Two teams coming off arguably their best all-around performances, scoring off for the championship here tonight. In our Star Watch, Brad, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better player to watch than conference player of the year for VCU, Dominic Jones. Absolutely. Dominic Jones had an outstanding year this year, moved back to the two-guard position from last year, up his three-point field goal percentage and production. He is an outstanding young man, a fun man to watch. Tony Skin has had a big basketball game, obviously against USC Wilmington, 27 points, also made a lot of big three-pointers. This is going to be an outstanding matchup. George Mason will be in the black jerseys. The white belongs to VCU, along with the University of North Carolina All-American and five-time NBA All-Star Brad Daugherty. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us as championship week continues. Our officials, Carl Hess, Duke Edsel, and Leslie Jones, three veteran officials here calling this one tonight in Richmond, Virginia. These two teams have never faced each other in Colonial Athletic Association tournament competition. Brad, both teams like to play in up-tempo, particularly VCU. The faster the tempo, the more it suits them. Absolutely. Love to push the basketball, but a great matchup is going to be down low. You got Godwin and Jai. Jai Lewis going at it. Two huge bodies, both about 6'6", 280 pounds. Will take up a lot of space down there. Tony Skin takes the first shot tonight. Take a look at the George Mason lineup. You saw Skin take that shot a moment ago. The only senior starting is Raul Heinen, the Flying Dutchman. Of course, the all-conference player is Jai Lewis, the big fella inside, 275 pounds. He's got great feet, good hands, big and strong. And you go the other, you know, the other side with Jai White. He's very, very active. Godwin's very active. Two big guys that can move. Take a look at the Rams starting five. Nick George just threw that ball away. Troy Godwin, the big fella inside. Dominic Jones, conference player of the year. B.A. Walker, great shooter from outside. And Pelarosa, both Walker and Pelarosa are true freshmen starting here, their first ever tournament title game. And I think some nerves getting the better of these teams early on. They've turned it over twice. There's Jim Laranaga, seventh year at George Mason, first 20 win season, trying to go to the postseason for the fourth time in seven years at the helm of the Patriots. Well, you're going to watch his basketball teams, and Coach Laranaga is well known for having scrambling, attacking type of defenses. As soon as the ball comes in, you're going to see a lot of full court pressure, a lot of man-to-man -man basketball. It's going to be very, very important for VCU to take care of the basketball against this George Mason team. And Brad, last night both these teams shot lights out, and you got to wonder, they probably went home and said, you know, we couldn't miss a basket. Tonight they can't even get it near the hoop. That's the way it goes. These big games, guys, tighten up just a little bit. And sometimes it's tough to find your rhythm. Right now both teams are having a tough time getting the ball in the hole. Somebody will settle down. They'll make a big shot and break the ice. Nice dish inside here. And oh, nice partially blocked by the big fellow, Lewis. 
I tell you what, that was a heck of a move. Nick George caught the basketball. Quick spin. Just lost his balance. Couldn't finish. And we are still scoreless here as we played almost two minutes and that foul inside on the push. See Nick George catch the basketball. Nice spin. He just lost his balance. Couldn't quite get those two feet together. White comes or Lewis comes over, cleans up the basketball, gets the rebound, stops a point blank shot. Good defense. That personal foul on Jai Lewis. These two teams have combined zero for five from the field here in the first two minutes of play. Still scoreless. B.A. Walker off the mark and a turnover, near turnover, as Tony Skin tips it away. There's Jeff Capel, 29 years of age, his second year at the helm of Virginia Commonwealth, youngest Division I college coach in America. He just turned 29 about three weeks ago. He's done a super job, this basketball team. Jeff, very mature young man, has really stepped into the slot of him as being the youngest basketball coach in, in the country, and it's filled very admirably. Incredible maturity. Of course, you play for Coach Krzyzewski, you learn a lot in a short amount of time. Dominic Jones breaks the seal on the basket for Virginia Commonwealth. You know, last year, Jerry Dominic played a lot of point guard for this basketball team. He just did not shoot the basketball well, particularly from the three-point range. He has stepped up this year and has become an outstanding tool for this basketball team outside the arc. George Mason, who shot 70% in the second half of the semifinal game, last out against UNC Wilmington, still hasn't been able to hit from the field. With a touch foul there on Godwin. He had his hand on Jai Lewis, and uh, I guess no one will have any hands on him. Well, Jeff Capel didn't like it. They see they're going to call it pretty close, and already two fouls called on the big fellas, Lewis and Godwin, the two 300-pounders inside. I think it would be good, better, Jeff. I'd like to see these two big guys be able to play and go at it and get after each other a little bit, not worried about Hand checks and touches. It's big bodies. There's gonna be hands and bodies flying everywhere when those two guys get together. Striped shirts maybe making a bit of a statement early on, but I'm like you. Here's the battle inside. Three times the charm no still can't get it to fall. And rebound for the Rams of VCU. Great defensive stand by Godwin, who had picked up that foul. That's tough when the big guy's coming right at the middle of your chest. Play very aggressive defense. Jones trying to penetrate. Nice spin move inside. One-handed soft shot. Can't get it. Own rebound and follow. That's why he's the conference player of the year. He can do it all. Absolutely. Great, great capture of the basketball. He had Nick George wide open just for a second when he made that great spin into the middle. Didn't see him, but cleaned up everything nice. Oh, nice little hook shot. Jai Lewis retaliating now for George Mason. Getting their first points. And after almost four minutes of play, the Patriots are on the board. The reason why Lewis was able to get that shot off, he caught the ball, stepped right back into the middle of Godwin, pushed him back with that, that rather large rear end, just created a lot of space for that little hook shot. That's a good job. You've eaten up that space. You're very kind when you say <laughs> rather large. It's 6'7", 275, and that's being generous yeah. scale. There's some big boys down there. They move. I mean, that, the feet and hands, the athleticism of these kids at 6'6", 280, 290, whatever. They say Lewis may be just a hand biscuit shy of 300 pounds. Big rascal down there, Jerry. Here's the matchup they wanted to watch inside. These guys going at it. Lewis, a nice spin move. I'll tell you what, he faced up with the basketball, put the ball on the floor. He showed all the skills that you like to see in a basketball player in that one possession, getting to the hoop. At 17 points in the quarterfinal game against Delaware, first team all-conference as a sophomore. Here's Pelarosa, a nice dish out to Walker for three. Good patience on that particular instant right there. Had a chance to drive the basketball, lost control. Got it back out. We set the offense on. Nice drive by Nick. Oh, yeah, he just went baseline, Doc. There was nobody home. Kevin Mickens just utilizing that long stride, long reach, getting an easy layup. Used the hoop to seal off the defender, able to get the backside basket. 6-0 run here for the Patriots. That one off the mark. Colorosa with the follow. Can't get it to fall. Can't get the roll. Follows it again and will get the two. Colorosa stepped in to pick up that easy shot. Then missed it. 
Got his own Karoon back, put it back down. Good hustle. Carol Rosa, a wide receiver recruited by a lot of colleges to play Division I football, came back as a walk-on. He's not a, a non-scholarship player and a major factor here in the second half of the year for VCU, as you saw right there on the floor. Oh, Lewis putting on clinic down low. Nice step up and under. Drive to the middle, get the little pump fake. He is putting on a big man, postman clinic down low. Outstanding. Lewis is six point, third rebound. And George Mason has roared back to take the lead. That first personal foul called on Tony Skin. It's a one-point game. 14-11 to play here in the first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by Lick and Mercury and the Think Big Sales event. Back at the Richmond Coliseum, George Mason up 8-7 to seven here early on, and six of their eight points have come inside with the big fella. Glad to have you back with us. And uh, Jai Lewis getting it done, Brad Doherty style, using the big body inside. Absolutely. Jai Lewis showed some great post moves there, catching that basketball, facing up. He is a handful. I think Troy God was going to have some tough times hanging on to him. We saw him get the ball in low. He backed in the first couple of times, used that big body. Look at that. Good little, little push with the elbow there, a little shoulder. Catches the ball, a little, little, little hook shot. Here he goes. Explode up and under. I mean, he just showed it all down that baseline and showed his ability. And that's what you want to see. I want to see Jai Lewis and Troy Godwin just go at it. I mean, everybody likes a little bit of the salad, but I want to see the steak. I want to see the big boys mix it up and get after it down there. Do not adjust your set at home. That is not thunder you hear. That's two 300-pounders just pounding each other under the basket. We're going to have that all night long. Lewis and Godwin as they throw that one away. And Jeff Capel. A little bit frustrated with what some of his defenders are doing and wants to be a little more patient on the offense. He needs to be more patient on the offense and, 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 and that particular play right there for George Mason, that pass from the top of the key down to the post is a poor angle. You, you have a tough time catching the ball if you're the big guy and you have a tough time making the precise pass if you're the passer. So you got to move to the corner get a better angle. Dominic Jones not getting the shot he wanted. The Rams just 3 of 13 from the field here early on after just shooting lights out last night in the semifinals, averaging 65% from the field for the game. They've only hit three baskets and scored a total of seven points. Mickens trying to step through and draws the foul inside. VCU's got to do a better job of stopping that drive. I think what we see with George Mason is they're coming down and, and they eventually settle into their, their offense. They eventually settle to execute and run something. And they're picking holes to step guys into, whether it be Lewis or Mickens or Davis. These guys are just trying to pick their opportunity to step in there. VCU's got to do a better job of building out defensively, cutting off those dribbling lanes and the passing lanes. Mickens, a 56% free throw shooter, chose George Mason, by the way, over Virginia Tech, VCU, and Duquesne. He could just as easily be playing with a white jersey tonight as with the uh, black and green of George Mason. Tremendous athlete, this Mickens. He really does a good job playing above the rim. Sometimes you'll see Jai Lewis catch the ball on the block. He'll get double teamed, and you'll see Mickens cut to that basket. Lewis will throw it up for a little lob. He'll go up and finish it. Second one off the iron. The margin is two. And the Rams trying to get something untracked offensively. There's the guy they go to, Dominic Jones, Conference Player of the Year, the senior shooting guard, B.A. Walker, one of the all-time leading scorers in Virginia high school history. Great matchups everywhere on the floor. A lot of it, you know, it's equal in size, equal in talent. Davis permits a tough foul right there on George. Well, tonight, Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with games on ESPN and ESPN2 at 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Niagara and Manhattan meet for the Metro Atlantic Championship. Then on ESPN at midnight Eastern, St. Mary's meets number four Gonzaga for the West Coast Conference title. Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Boy, Gonzaga dodging a bullet there. Oh, man, if Ronnie Turioff had the... Had a little extra hustle after he missed that shot last night and gathered his own rebound back up and got a shot in. That They may have went on the snide, but hey, you get to the end of the season and you get distracted, you get tired, and 
you know, trying to focus on the tournament, thinking about that. And sometimes teams will get you at the end of the year. Could have been a tough week for the West Coast. Yeah. Stanford losing, Gonzaga just nearly getting bumped off. I had uh, Coach Lavin and I did a show the other night, and he was whining and complaining because Stanford got knocked <laughs> off from the Zags. He was upset. So he, the West Coast gets no love, and you know, they almost let him down this week. <laughs> And George converts as VCU retakes the lead here 10 to 9. At the Richmond Coliseum, Colonial Athletic Association title game along with Brad Doherty. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. Davis on the drive. Can't get it to fall. Shuttle inside, and they will set up the offense once again here for the Patriots. They were so quick. He just blew by the defender, got in nice and deep, just couldn't finish the shot. Good job getting the ball back out front. Boy, they're cutting, trying to get to that basket. See, they're trying to find those slots we were talking about. This is going to have to move their feet. You have to talk. A lot of screening going on. Once they initiate the offensive pass, here comes a nice screen. Here's Reynolds. He's quick as lightning. Nice dish inside. And the conversion by Urbina. Jesus Urbina out of Venezuela. Urbina did a nice job of catching that ball, keeping his eyes on the ball, received the pass, and finished all in one move. Look at this scrambling defense. Dominic Jones can't get it to fall. Here again come the Patriots. Reynolds can fly, and he throws it away. That pass intercepted by Michael Doles. Good thing Doles is in full stride because George, George Mason was wide open, had a great layup opportunity, but he was step for step. Oh, inside. Finally, they get the big fella going. Troy Godwin gets his first two points of the game here as we are almost halfway through the first half, and he needs to be a major factor inside for the Rams. Absolutely. They're going to have to establish that just because of Lewis. But the impressive thing about Godwin is the stamina. He has the potential. He can stay out there and play and be effective the whole ball game. Well, as championship week continues, does history repeat itself again this year? Well, thanks, Reese. At fifth seed, Boston College giving the number one seed, UConn, all they can handle up there in Big East uh, tournament play. We got a good one here. VCU up a point over George Mason. VCU, the regular season conference titleist, the number one seed, and the number three seed Patriots of George Mason. George Mason, all 11 points have come from the inside for, for George Mason. There's another basket. They're pounding it inside. They've not taken or have not hit an outside shot in this game yet. All in the paint. That was Trent Wirtz, a sophomore out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Look at that. Big difference in the paint there, doubling it up inside 12 to 6, and here come the Patriots again. Urbina's got a little size on Godwin. He gets up and blocks that shot. Good job. There he is on the rebound. Godwin gets, pulls it down. And the Rams of VCU shooting only 26% thus far, and they shot 65% from the field last night in the semifinal, 73% in the first half. Here is Doles from outside. Can't get it to fall. Whoa. And finally, B.A. Walker, Bobby Anthony Walker from Onancock, Virginia. I told you he's eighth all-time in the in Virginia high school scoring history. As a true freshman, he lit it up last night here for the Rams. Great hustle by BCU, keeping that basketball alive. Both Kurtz and Urbina collapsed with the ball, active. Good job picking it up, BCU making the bucket. Good opportunity. Rams up by two at the midpoint of the first half. A little short, here comes Doles down with the rebound. These two teams split during the regular season, each winning on their home floor. Good ball movement by BCU, stepping that middle, young man. Good job. Oh, that's excellent basketball, Doc. Came right back to it, made the pass, followed his pass, came right back to the ball, captured it, and shot. Derek Reed, good job. Derek Reed, the junior falling from right here in Richmond. Same thing when you shoot the basketball. You follow that shot. You follow the pass, follow the shot. You make a pass, you follow it, you cut in front of the basketball, in front of the defender. You shoot the basketball, you step in front of the defender, try to get the rebound if you miss. Follow. Reynolds, who didn't play last night, nice dish inside. And Reynolds' penetration is opening up some inside lanes for the big fellas. 
Well, Tuesday Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with two more games on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, it's the Big East Women's Championship presented by State Farm from the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. Then at 9 Eastern, Illinois, Chicago and Wisconsin-Milwaukee meet for the Horizon League Championship. It is Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. He made a great point, Doc. Uh, the, the penetration by George Mason is outstanding. Everyone tried the guards, try to get into the middle of the lane, draw the defender, draw the big guys, and get that easy pass to the big guy down low. Nice defensive mood inside by Derek Reed, holding his own against a 280 pounder Lewis. Reed's giving up a ton of weight, but he did the right thing. He gave, he gave after he got a couple of shots coming backwards. Then when Lewis went up, he just matched his jump, went up and pinned the ball. This has been the Achilles heel for BCU this year, turnovers. You heard the guys in the studio talking about it. They had trouble with the number nine seed in the quarterfinals, Towson, because they turned it over so much. Well, look at that big time rebound by Jai Lewis. Two, back, two guys go up with him. He comes out of the crowd with the, with the rock. Powerful young man. Jai Lewis, who played uh, letter twice in football in lacrosse, he's an offensive lineman to no one surprise in high school. Leonard Wartz in track and field. We mentioned he had 17 points in the quarterfinal against Delaware. First team all conference. Bringing down his third offensive rebound, sort of dominating inside here in the early going. Just very light on his feet. I was talking with, with Coach Scott Cherry, who's an assistant coach there, who also played at North Carolina back in the day. And he just says the guy is so smart, so cerebral about the game of basketball. He has a great understanding. And uh, he's just tremendously light on his feet for such a big person. Speaking of North Carolina, nothing cerebral about that one that they played oh, on man. Saturday night over uh, in Cameron. No, they, you know, they played hard. Both teams played hard. And I think it was a late start. You know, both teams, that, that was a tough basketball game with all the hype and the emotion going into it. We got started at 9 o'clock, and it's like both teams started flat. No one could make a shot. But Duke put some good runs together. North Carolina couldn't score for about five minutes there. And uh, Duke just pulled away. And, and once again, they, they knock us upside the head. So you've got to figure that one out. I think the crowd was extra rested. It was extra noisy. It was. <laughs> it's always noisy at that point. Absolutely. Nick George down with the rebounds. BCU largest lead here. Four points. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Michael Dole, little crossover. Give you some little, little air time. Michael Dole started nine of the first ten games. He's been a role player now coming off the bench. Has had a huge turn tournament. BCU now on a seven-nothing run. The margin now six points, the largest of the first half for the Rams. And Jim Laranega wants to talk it over. This tournament being played here in Richmond, which is exactly where Virginia Commonwealth University is. They had a huge pep rally. The students were invited over about 2 o'clock today. They got here at noon, and they are fired up for what's happening here. Watch this oh. move by Gold. I mean, that's just a nice little shoulder fake like he's going to go to his left, crosses over to his right, going to his strong hand. There's no help. Lewis is late. No one ever, I mean, the weak side help is not there. Look at this, no help. Lamar Butler's got to come across that lane. Lewis has to be there, closing on the basketball to, to trap it. No one home. He gets a free one. This guy came off the bench in the quarterfinals. Nine points, nine rebounds in the quarterfinals. Last night in the semifinals, 12 points and four rebounds off the bench. And there's the run, 7 nothing run. Our statistician uh, extraordinaire here, Marty Aronoff has telling us that George Mason is just 29% from the field. They are shooting very poorly here in the first half. Well, they started out with all their shots coming from, from deep and scored some baskets, and uh, VCU just hung around. You get the feeling that VCU can really put the hammer down, play some good defense, get some stops, they can blow this thing open. Tony Skin tries one from Lynchburg. It's off the mark. See, that, that was an ill-advised shot because skin shot is not what you want in your offense. That's not a good shot. But you get a chance to redeem yourself by the rebound, reset your offense. But when you pull up and take that other 35-foot shot that, that Butler just shot, that's two bad shots in a row and, and, and you know, possession's gone. Cannot believe that's exactly what Larry Nega wanted from the timeout. Nice spin move by Tommy Jones. Jones shows his athleticism right there, Doc. He catches it in the lane. Nice spin move. Finishes with the easy shot. No frills, no fuss. Just get on the bus, baby, because he is very solid. Dominic Jones chose Virginia Commonwealth over Notre Dame.
Those were his final two options. He wanted to stay home so his family could see him play. He's from nearby Chesterfield, Virginia. The margin now eight points at 6.29 to play here from the Richmond Coliseum. Jeff Capel Graham is getting it done up 21-13. Back at the Richmond Coliseum, the Colonial Athletic Association title game. VCU up by eight, largest margin of the first half. One of the reasons, the conference player of the year, Dominic Jones, a senior guard from Chesterfield, Virginia. Watch this move. Great play. Catches the basketball free throw line. Turn, spin, one step. Just easy, smart, fundamentally sound basketball. There's no help. John Lewis has to get over there, not stick your hands out like you want to. you got to get over there and get in front of that guy. Get your feet in front of him so he can't get to the basket. He averages 16 a game on the season. He has seven thus far tonight. Leads the team in steals. Sixth in career scoring in Virginia Commonwealth history. George Mason on the other hand has not hit one from outside the paint. They have not hit a jump shot tonight. Unless that one goes and it does not. Good double down on Lewis, making him kick that ball out. Kurt's wide open, couldn't make the shot. Good look at the basket. But once again, the, the efforts were futile. Didn't have a good, just struggling, putting the ball in the hole from the outside. Another turnover. Here's Norwood, the freshman inside on Reed. That's better of it, will pull it back out. And you see, he's, he's a freshman. He's a little intimidated to take it to the basket hard. Pulled up. Ended up being a pretty smart play, though. May have gotten the charge, but call. And they're going back in, partially blocked. Lewis gets the own ball back and is fouled inside. Nice second and third effort by Jai Lewis. Yeah, he caught that basketball. He just blew Derek Reed up and under the basket. Got bumped a little bit on the shot. Michael Doles comes over and slaps him on the arm. That's not going to be enough when you get around this big guy. He goes up too strong. I mean, he catches it. That's, that's Nick George. He just blows him out of the blows him out of the way, and there's the foul right there by Doles. Doles only give up about 70 pounds. Here's the big guy back in, Troy Godwin. By the way, that's the first points for George Mason in five minutes and 45 seconds. They're going almost six minutes without a point. Yeah, which is interesting because George Mason's usually the team that creates the, 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 the chaos and the panic with all the defensive running jumps and scrambling. Lois will not get the roll, and Godwin will come down with it. Really was a treat to come in and watch Coach Capel coach today. I mean, he's such a young guy, but he's so mature as a basketball coach. Very smart, very knowledgeable. Of course, his dad coaches in the, the NBDL down in Fayetteville, and uh, his, his brother, uh, Jason, played at North Carolina. He's also playing in the NBDL, so great basketball lineage. They had the break, and whoa, getting it. Great steal. Peloroso with the steal. Here is Carter, the freshman, is partially blocking. What that was going to follow by Nick George. Boy, you talk about a difference he has made in the last month when he has gotten healthy. Nick George is an athlete. Absolutely. Let's talk. And what about the great hustle by Pelarosa? He kept playing the play. The basketball was a little, just, a, just, just a little bit out of control. Watch him. He just keeps playing the play. That is outstanding hustle. Great play. Great heads up play because Lehman was just looking to get the offensive started. Pelarosa just picked his pocket from behind. Terry Reynolds, I'm sorry, was looking to get the offense started. And Pelarosa just came up and knocked it away. B.A. Walker, 81% free throw shooter. Leads a team from the charity stripe and makes the first of two. We are in Richmond, Virginia at the Richmond Coliseum. The 22nd edition of the Colonial Athletic Association Men's Basketball Tournament along with five-time NBA All-Star and former All-American from North Carolina, Brad Doherty. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. George Mason in the black. They were the number three seed. VCU, the regular season champions, are in the white. George Mason's inability to make the out shot right now. It's crucial. They have to figure out a way to score some buckets simply because VCU has the potential with the players they have on the floor to run out and, and, and run away and hide in this basketball game. This is Terry Reynolds, the junior point guard who didn't play the semifinals because of tendonitis, only played a few minutes in the quarterfinals. He makes his offense go. He's been struggling with his uh, knees a little bit. They got him on the floor. Here is uh, skin from outside. Can't get it to fall. What a great hustle. They just cannot get the ball in the hole. George Mason's flying around. Skins, he's up in the air. Kurtz is hustling. Just will not go down. 
Oh, oh tough pass. Bounce pass top. The key's not going to make it. Ash break. Don't have the numbers, but here's Reynolds dishing it back out to Wurtz for three. Well, Wurtz is having a tough time getting a shot in, but hey, big guy there to clean up everything. Good job. That's their only offense inside to the big guy, Lewis. VCU continue to be sloppy on the offensive end, throwing it away. They get it back this time. Here goes Jones for the soft one-hander. Getting a hustle, such a panic sometimes when you make a great play. You want to make finish it off with a basket. That time VCU has a nice capture of the basketball after a, a chaotic play, and they take a tough shot. Lewis tries the 18-footer, can't get it to fall. I'm not so sure that's his shot. No, but uh, no one else is making him. He might as well shoot one. He scored inside. He might as well give it a shot. Let's outside. see what's happening. Nobody else in Jordan <laughs> can put it in the hole. So, see if he can break the ice. Really struggling. Lewis has 10 of their 17 points. And the margin is six. 3.18 to play here in the first half. Jeff Capel's Rams up by six over George Mason. Oh, caught him sleeping there, Doc. A nice inbounds play, just right up over the top. And the, the CAA, play, CAA player of the year, Dominique Jones, goes up and lays an easy one in. Well, George Mason is 8 of 32 from the field. Lewis is 5 of 11. The rest of the Patriots are 3 of 21. Someone else has got to score, and that's not going to get it done as they turn it over again, and here come the Rams. Godwin wide open inside, but Walker didn't see him. Tough bounce pass inside. Godwin shows his great hands by knocking it away. Oh, what a, what a finish by Godwin. Got tripped. Kept his balance. Laid it in. They're taking it to him. Godwin had 15 points in the quarter final game and seven rebounds. He has come to play here in the championship. His fourth point of the night, equaling his rebound number thus far here in the first half. And they will call Walker on the hold as he comes across the screen and grabs a hold of Reynolds. His first personal foul for the freshman. George Mason can do a, a little bit better job of throwing that basketball inside, playing a little two-man game with Davis and Lewis, creating some type of opportunities for some jump shots. Butler looks like he's gonna run off a double screen. A, well, he didn't get a screen at all. But that's part of the problem. Needs something to free up some of those shooters. They get to Lewis, he's got some back help in there behind Godwin oh, Reynolds, God. wide open from outside. There we go. Finally! Excellent inside-outside play. I thought there would be a double screen. They just run a nice little curl, get the ball down low to Lewis. The double team collapses, somebody's wide open. George Mason, one of ten from beyond the arc, but they finally hit one. Contact, no foul call, but there's a turnover again by VCU. Well, Tuesday Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with two more games on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, it's the Big East Women's Championship presented by State Farm from the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. At 9 Eastern, Illinois, Chicago, and Wisconsin, Milwaukee meet for the Horizon League Championship as Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2 continues. Good ball swing. Keep it moving, get Lewis drop down low. See, if Lewis doesn't drop down after he makes that perimeter pass, he's floating around the free throw line. They don't have enough board strength, shot after shot, to participate. He's got to dive into that basket and box out with him. And let's check in back in the studio with Reese Davis. Reese? Okay, Doc, again, checking in on the Big East Women's Tournament, Boston College and UConn. They are tied at 70 with 36 seconds to go. If you'd like to check out the end and see if the five seed in that tournament can knock off the reigning national champion, it's over on ESPN2. Diana Taurasi just had a three-point play to tie it. Final 36 seconds on ESPN2, and we're back at halftime. Thank you, Reese. Well, they got a great one going on there in the Big East Tournament with, uh, how about uh, UConn get in trouble? Well, absolutely. I mean, like I said, this time of year, it's always tough. You're a little tired, you lose a little bit of focus, and uh, everybody's always hunting that UConn bandwagon. So that's a big badge to hang on your hat. Well, I'll update you on all, of that, all that's happening there after a minute and 17 seconds left here in the first half. Our 7-Up Halftime Report coming your way with Reese Davis and Digger Phelps back in the studio. 
Jim Laranega, 54 years of age, seventh year of the head coach, trying to get to the postseason for the fourth time in seven years at the helm of the Patriots of George Mason. Laranega. Again, his career as an assistant for yep. Terry Holland at That's Davidson right. College and also at Virginia. Yep, I, back when I played in the old days, he, uh, he was coached there back in the Jeff Lamp and Ralph Sampson era. Heck of a basketball coach, good defensive guy, really teaches his kids. Kids are all fundamentally sound. They go through any of his programs, and uh, they're lucky to have him. We're in this break because the officials are taking a look at the replay monitor. There is Carl Hess. He, along with Duke Edsel and Les Jones, Seven-point differential. Yeah, what a, what a run they had with Terry Holland. Four NCAA tournament appearances, three Atlantic Coast Conference regular seasons, and two NCAA Final Fours. Of course, of course uh, Ralph Sampson and Olden Polonese had a lot to say with what happened at Virginia oh, as well. Absolutely, and uh, we saw Coach Holland here earlier tonight in the crowd watching the ball game. Come out to watch, watch a little Virginia basketball. It's in the, in the States. I'm sure he's come out to, to see what's happening. Oh, nice dish out to Jones, who nails the three. Such a good play because the defense is drawn to the basketball, and Jones just gets over and hides in that corner. He's wide open. By the time the defender turns around and catches him, it's too late. 12 points here in the first half for Dominic Jones, conference player of the year, and the margin is now 10 with 56 ticks on the clock here in the half. Having some problems with the clock over there. Once again, Carl Hess is wanting to take a look at the clock, so we're going to show him some replays. As Talked about Laranega. How about Jeff Capel? Oh. The job he has done, only the second-year head coach here at Virginia Commonwealth. You mentioned the fact that his uh, dad, Jeff Jr., a college head coach for 13 years, eight at Old Dominion. His uh, brother, Jason, played at North Carolina. Now he's working with his dad uh, in the NBA Development League yep, yep. down in Eastern North Carolina. I'm going to tell you what, Jeff Capel, I'm, I hate to do it to you VCU fans, but he is probably, as far as the young basketball coaches go, maybe Matt Painter out there as well, the hottest commodity in the country. Well, I'm going to tell you, wise. last night, sitting here watching the semifinals, there were a number of athletic directors uh, from other schools who were sitting here watching what that young man was doing at the age of 29. If very, I, very impressed. Yeah, if I was an athletic director, I'd be tapping on Mr. Capel's door. This guy right here knows a lot of basketball, and this is the reason why. That's his dad, who coaches down at Fayetteville. He's just one of the legends in basketball. If you're a basketball man, you know Mr. Capel. And uh, he's been around a long time, knows the game, teaches it extremely well, and uh, has two great products in basketball environment. Jeff said, I learned so much from my dad about how to put it all in perspective. I learned a lot about growing up, about what basketball meant in the family. I learned a lot of X's and O's from a guy named Shashevsky in Durham, yep, North Carolina. Yep. But you got two mentors like that. How, how can you expect to, not to be pretty good? He's, he's very good. And uh, like I say, it's street watching run his practices and his demeanor. And uh, that's a tough gig to handle at 27, 28, 29, 30, even up to 35. Final minute of the first half here at the Richmond Coliseum Colonial Athletic Association title game. Number one seed, VCU up by 10. George Mason trying to cut it to eight or seven, possibly, by the half. That shot off the mark. Won't get it done. And it'll belong to the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth. I was just going to say, George Mason really needs to get some good shots going in the half, even if they miss them. So they have some confidence, because if you're getting good opportunities, you're going to make some of those. It'll eventually, the, the well will open up, and there'll be a little water at the bottom. So that was not a bad opportunity. Reynolds Grove, a little off balance, but a, a close shot. Now you need a good defensive stand. You can't let VCU score going in and get more momentum. They're having shot clock problems. So they're trying to keep an eye on the clock here. Full final 35 seconds. We'll be headed to the studio for our 7-up halftime report with uh, Reese and Digger Phelps. VCU trying to add to their lead here. Jesse Pelorosa, the true freshman, walk-on, non-scholarship player. Here's B.A. Walker, great outside shooter. Five-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Four seconds on the shot clock. Inside of the big guy. He can't get a handle on it. Got to get the shot off. And the shot clock will expire, and George Mason will get it back with five seconds to play. Really would have loved to have had a shot, obviously, but they also did themselves some justice. They had a lot of time on the clock, so now this should be a rushed possession for George Mason. 
A little pressure on the basketball. It'll end up being more of a heave than a shot. So even though that PCU didn't score, they still used every ounce of that clock. They're going to try to get the ball to Tony Skin, who had 27 points last night, has been scoreless tonight. Here's Butler, clock winding down, needs to get the shot off, and it'll short. And our margin at halftime will be 10 points. Virginia Commonwealth up. Jeff Capel's bunch getting it done. Jim Laranaga needs to talk about the locker room. Let's go to our halftime studio. Seven up halftime report with Reese Davis and Digger Phelps. Guys? All right, Doc, thank you very much. The end of the Big East women's semifinal game between. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7UP, is brought to you by Hershey's Milkshakes, Shake Reality, and Volvo. Volvo for life. Championship Week presented by 7UP, and the students are fired up here at the Richmond Coliseum. That's the Virginia Commonwealth crowd. You see why they're so happy? They're up by 10 over George Mason. As you take a look at our game track, and we'll show you what happened and how they got there in the first half. Oh, the big fellas, that's what we're talking about. The state boys down low. Jai Lewis was awesome. 10 points, 5 rebounds, 2 steals. He virtually scored every time he caught the ball in the post. Made some nice kickout passes. Troy Godwin, almost as effective, but his team is playing better. So that's the most important thing. Held his own, had a foul earlier. Uh, had got a little bit of problems with the foul, but still was very effective. We'll see what these two guys do in the second half. George Mason has hit only nine shots from the field in the first half. They are 9 of 36 for 25%, and that will not get it done anywhere, much less a championship game like tonight. Half of their points, 10 of the 20 have come, as you mentioned, uh, Brad, from the big guy. Jai Lewis inside. Well, you want to keep getting quality shots. Yeah, if they're not falling, they're just not falling, but eventually they will go in. So good defense by Lewis. Didn't give up an inch of space. May Godwin force that shot. Nick George, nice hustle in the rebound, swats it back out. Godwin's getting cornered inside. Nice pass to Pelarosa. Can't get it to fall. Ball zone shot. It's blocked. Nice pass from Godwin. Pelarosa just couldn't finish the easy layout, but does a good job giving it out. Ah, Nick, the man inside. Nick George on the follow. What a great hustle and possession for VCU. Good looks at it. Like I said, Pelarosa couldn't get it to go down. Great activity by VCU out of the gate, even though it was you know, come up with an empty basket. Still like the hustle. VCU got seven shots to make two points, and that, that'll kill you when you get that many offensive rebounds. Four offensive rebounds in that possession alone. That was awesome. If George, George Mason can create those spaces, get that ball inside, kick it back out, get some good shots. But look at that defense scrabble for DCU. Every time the ball lands in an offensive player's hands, there's a defender there waiting on it. Just like that. That's awesome defense. Partially blocked, and Lewis tries it, and they're going to call a shot clock violation. What a stop right there by VCU. Wow. Who just on the other end was so active and couldn't get a shot off. They didn't compl compound the problem by coming down and giving up an easy shot. Virginia Commonwealth, number two in scoring defense this year in the Colonial Athletic Association, allowing only 63 points a game. They allowed only 20 in the first half, and they're basically just shutting out the perimeter offense for George Mason. Non-existent thus far. D.A. Walker trying to get inside. Very deliberate offense. Not typically the VCU game, but being very deliberate. And uh, the nice roll yeah. for Big Troy Godwin. And he showed great patience on that, Doc. He caught the basketball. No one came for the double team. They're letting Lewis handle that one on his own. He just waved everyone off. But a nice, powerful move up and over the top. Biggest lead of the game here. At two minutes into the second half. 12 points by the Rams of VCU. And now for the first time tonight, Tony Skin shows up. He had 27 points last night, was scoreless in the first half, and nails that three. That was. Jai Lewis set a screen on, the, on Dominic, and he just could not get around that thing at all. Raul Heinen, the only senior starting for George Mason, played on the Dutch national team with fellow countryman Rick Smith, former NBA player.
Trying to get caught and grabbing as he comes off that screen. He got popped on a screen and stuck his arm out to try to slow down Jones and hooked him. Yeah, first personal foul on Heinen here tonight. Margin back to nine. Here is Dominic Jones. Almost gets it taken away, gets it kicked by Heinen. It'll belong back to VCU and they'll reset the game clock. Well, Tuesday Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with two more games on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, it's the Big East Women's Championship presented by State Farm. Boston College will face the Rutgers West Virginia winner. And at 9 Eastern, Illinois, Chicago, and Wisconsin, Milwaukee meet for the Horizon League Championship. Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. That one at 9 o'clock should be good. Bruce Pearl getting doing a nice job at Wisconsin Milwaukee. Should be an awesome game. Good matchup right there. Paul Rosa in last possession got a great offensive rebound. Kept the ball alive. Once again, great hustle by VCU. Nickens. I'm sorry, Flynn stepped out of skin. I'm sorry, steps out of bounds there. Now to belong back to VCU. Pella Rosa, we told you his story about being recruited to play football at NC State, Maryland, Michigan State. He couldn't make the SAT scores quick enough. Decided to go to prep school. Went to uh, Fork Union. Played football there. Eight touchdown receptions a year ago. Decided he had some shoulder problems. Wanted to play basketball. Came back to his native Richmond and walked on and has played all year long as a walk-on non-scholarship player. I'm going to be going out on a limb here, but I believe he'll have a scholarship next year. I would say so. Just a great athlete, obviously. And, uh, Struggles have a little bit of tendonitis in those knees, so when he comes out of the basketball game, you'll see him over on the stationary bike a lot of times trying to keep those legs warm. Chip and roll high. Good post up by Lewis. Didn't take advantage of it, though. Butler penetrating, and he will call Pelarosa on the push and the hand check. They're, they're actually calling the hand checks a lot closer. Now, even in tournament time, we're seeing a lot, a lot more calls outside. Yeah, really cleaning up the, hand, the, the, the part of putting your hands on the, the offensive player, which is great. He's going to call it, be consistent, got no problem with it. Pelarosa thought that big screen from Lewis was coming, so he tried to put that hand on him to create some space and got caught. That's Jesse Pelarosa's first personal foul. We just joined our coverage. We are at the Richmond Coliseum. 22nd edition of the Colonial Athletic Association Men's Conference Tournament Championship. Virginia Commonwealth in the white. George Mason in the black and green. The number one and number three seed with VCU up by nine. The margin was 10 at halftime. Along with Brad Doherty, I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. Championship week presented by 7-Up, and it's just getting cranked up, and this is a prime example of some of the great games we're going to see. That tie-up in the possession arrow will belong to George Mason. George Mason just having a tough time getting any good looks at the basket, getting any easy shots. VCU just run and jump, scramble, active. Everyone's got ball man, you know, ball you man. They're, they're just doing a great job defensively. Good shell drill of defense. Outstanding thus far. Nice athletic move by Mickens. Can't get it to fall. Wrestle for the rebound, and Nick George will take it away. George stayed with that play. He got beat, but kept coming, kept hustling. Got a strong rebound. And Godwin clears out the house and will get called for the personal foul. Put the big mitt on the guy behind him. And uh, that'll be 15 yards and a personal foul. <laughs> now they're only going to call one. The margin is nine. Back with more from Richmond in just a moment. Back at the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. Championship week presented by 7-Up. VCU, the number one seed and regular season conference champion up by nine. And there's some PTI fans in the, in the crowd. Absolutely. What a great show, pardon the interruption. What a great, great job those guys do. Yeah, it's funny. Will Bond and Kornheiser going at it every day. That's a lot of fun to watch. 
How many jobs does Tony Kornheiser have? He's, he's given a couple of them up. He's got so many of them. I, I can imagine. I can't, when does he sleep? <laughs> Nice bucket by George Mason. Jai Lewis is no shots yet this half. He's 5'11 in the first 20 minutes, but he hasn't touched the ball. So they are going a different direction. Got a nice lay in there. George Mason started to get heated up a little bit. They've been basically cold as ice from outside. George Mason take it into overtime in the quarterfinal game, and that game finished about 11 o'clock at night on Saturday night, so maybe the legs are a little tired. Nice inside move. Oh, nice athletic effort. And uh, Tony Skin now starting to come to life. Dominic Jones tried to make a very tough pass back across the defense, and Jai Lewis hustled back, knocking it away. Skin makes a nice hard basket. Well, Tuesday Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with two more games on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, it's the Big East Women's Championship presented by State Farm. Boston College will face the Rutgers, West Virginia winner at 9 Eastern. Illinois, Chicago, and Wisconsin, Milwaukee meet for the Horizon League Championship. That's Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. George Mason in the midst of a 7-0 run. They have cut the margin to 5. It was 12 at the 16-minute mark. Good defense right now by George Mason. Everyone's communicating, talking. Woo, that's a tough shot. Oh, you got to box out. Walker way off the mark, and the follow by Nick George, and he is hammered inside. He will shoot for the three-point play. Nick George extremely active on the backboard. Took a tough, tough shot. B.A. Walker from about 30 feet. You see, that's just great hustle. Nice pump fake. There's the foul and the bucket. What a play. He just out hustled the defender. No one's, no one's even around him. He gets to the basket. He's got so much room. Gives a pump fake because everyone's retreating so late. Gets everyone in the air and draws a foul. That is George's first field goal of the evening. He had 16 points last night in the semifinal game. The young man who grew up in Manchester, England, spent a year at Montrose Christian Academy before coming to VCU and can't convert on the free throw. George Mason roaring back. They have been very sluggish, to put it mildly, on offense yeah. for much of this ball game. Just can't find that crevice to put an easy shot in. Everything's tough. And Reynolds is fouled as he is penetrating inside. That'll be the second personal on Dominic Jones, the senior. See VCU jump into that 2-3 zone, take up a little bit of space. That's a smart basketball play. You have a team that's struggling shooting the ball, that's trying to get to the basket. Now you're going to force them to take some out shots. Here comes Skin looking for that shot. It's a little baseline screen. VCU plays it perfectly. They're talking. You can see everyone talking. Here Coach Capel Young yelling. Skin's coming off for a shot. That's his play. Trying to cool off George Mason here with the zone after they penetrated the man coming from way outside from 25 feet, almost had it roll in. And they're going to call the foul. If that's on Jones, that's his third. I think that's going to be on Michael Dolan's. Well, tonight, Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with games on ESPN and ESPN2 at 9 Eastern, ESPN2, Niagara, and Manhattan meet for the Metro Atlantic Championship. Then on ESPN at midnight Eastern, St. Mary's meets number four Gonzaga for the West Coast Conference title. That's Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. We are just getting heated up. But what is a very, very special week for all the hoops junkies like Man, myself and you around yeah, the country. My eyes are burn up. I've been watching so much basketball, listening to basketball. It's like when you eat too many donuts, man. You know, you, just, you can eat two or three, then you have four, then you have five. You know, next thing you know, you just, you're miserable. And you and I are headed to Bowling Green, Kentucky tomorrow night for the Sun Belt title game. That's exactly right. This is just great. Great time of year. If you're a basketball fan at all, you can click on ESPN any time of the night and watch basketball, basically. It's awesome. Margin back to seven, back to man-to-man -man defense for VCU. 
That was some excellent defense right there by Dominique Jones. He stayed in front of, the, of Reynolds very well, but they ended up getting a good basket. George Mason, great help. Great second effort by Jai Lewis. The margin now back to seven. That's Lewis's first field goal in the second half. Jones penetrates. And they will wipe the basket out. He is called for the charge, and that will be his third personal foul here. Let's give a lot of credit to Trent Burks. He just stayed at home, and Jones just barreled right into him. Mark it down. 12.45 to play. Jones picks up three personals. Two quick ones. Coach Capel tried to get Pelarosa in the ball game, but he's overriding that bicycle to keep his legs warm. I talked about the tendon ice in his knees. He couldn't get him in there. Boy, Coach was disappointed. Oh, nice second effort on the rebound. Oh, oh, man. And Reynolds buries a 22-footer. Here come the Patriots. Here comes that defense we talk about. Run and jump, run and scramble. But look at the time. Better advance it. Jim Laranega's Patriots have come to life. Their fans can smell the comeback. And Jeff Capel wants to talk it over with his Rams because George Mason can score in a hurry, and their fans know it. It is a two-point game. Back with more from Richmond in a moment. We're at the semifinal stage in the Mid-Continent Conference. Semifinal between Valparaiso and Missouri-Kansas City. With a good entry pass. A little bounce in there. Dan Hopper's going to use the left and put it up softly. And Kansas City, though, still up 53-46. to 46. That game's in progress. The winner gets the Chicago State IUPUI Survivor tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, on ESPN2. And thanks, Reese. A little Mid-Continent Conference action. By the way, Boston College, congratulations. That huge upset for UConn over the Huskies. My heavens, uh, that is a big win in terms of NCAA women's basketball. Yeah, as far as that is concerned. I tell you, this time of year, man, you just never know, Doc. That's why you got to lace them up and play them. You got Reynolds and Skin. Both have five points in this half for George Mason. Finally getting some outside shots to go down. A 12-2 run by the Patriots of George Mason. It is a two-point ball game. He's turned up a notch. Getting a little hot in here. Uh-oh. A near turnover by VCU, and this launch one from outside, not even close. And the shot clock violation will give it back to the Patriots. Getting tight, getting hot in here. It's heating up. We have got ourselves a great basketball game down to the wire. Colonial Athletic Association Championship coming your way from Richmond Coliseum. We'll be right back. Eleven forty-four to play here in Richmond. 34-32 VCU up over George Mason, who have come back from a 12-2 run from 12 behind. Take a look at the Rams. Uh, take George Mason's resume, by the way. 21 and 8, first 21 season for Jim Laranega. 12 and 6 in the conference. The RPI not that impressive at 81. But uh, they played some awfully good teams. In fact, their only two losses in non-conference play were at Maryland and at North Carolina. Not uh, bad. That's uh, not bad at all. And both of these teams. That's why we're we're both you know we're thinking that whoever wins this basketball game gets the bid. And the other team may struggle getting it. But two excellent basketball teams. You know, VCU really struggling. Their Achilles heel has been turnovers, as Digger mentioned earlier. Right now they have 12, leading to 13 George Mason points. So they got to take better care of the basketball. Remember, these two teams won. They split this year, each one on their home court. George Mason won a couple of weeks ago by 12 at home. VCU won by 14 back in January. That one would have tied it. We are back at the Richmond Coliseum here in Richmond, Virginia. Colonial Athletic Association Championship for the 22nd year. Along with Brad Doherty, I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. And we've got a great one going on here. Read on a nice follow. Good job. By, yeah, that's a great job catching the basketball in the middle there. Michael Doles made a nice little pass down low, and Reed just finished up, cleaned up very nicely. Smart basketball. Virginia Commonwealth was up by 10 at half, 30 to 10. They moved out to a 12-point lead. Then the Patriots roared back on a 12-2 run to cut the margin to two. That was about a minute ago, and now 
They have missed on two consecutive trips up the floor, and the margin has grown back to four, and here come the Rams of VCU again. I mean, Terry Reynolds, it seems like, any time he wants to, to get in the middle of that lane, he can get some shots to start to fall down. He can really make a huge impact, obviously, on this offensive end for George Mason. He gets into that lane so quick and so low to the ground. Here is Doles. Good who pass again. Yeah. Oh, good block by Urbina. Oh, it's point blank shot. Urbina comes over, cleans it up. Reynolds on the break. It's oh, he got caught. He got shoved. Good gracious. That was a two-handed shove. Godwin. Woo. With a smash. He about tore the whole backboard down. I mean, oh. Reynolds goes to the basket. He got blasted. That wasn't a foul. Ooh. That was a mugging underneath there for Reynolds oh, a moment ago. I mean, he got blown out of there. Look at this. Watch him get popped here. It's a little elbow there. Take a better look. It comes to drive. Oh, that's to the big fella down low. Everybody gets out of the way. Look out down below. Jordan. Cleaning it up. Troy Godwin, eight points, five rebounds. And Jeff Capel trying to do something that Virginia Commonwealth hasn't done since their very first year in the league, and that's hold on and win the conference tournament title. They won it back in 1996. They finished the year at 22 and seven, actually 20 and seven. They've won two in the conference tournament. By seven over Towson in the quarterfinals, by 17 over Old Dominion last night in the semifinals. When they just shot the lights out here at the Richmond Coliseum, and they're trying to hang on now as the margin has grown back to six points. Come out after the timeout, let's see what they get. Down low, haven't heard much from Lewis. Good block by Godwin. Third block of the game by Godwin inside. He's becoming more and more of a factor. He was pretty much non-existent the first two minutes of the game when it was all Lewis inside. That ball tipped out of bounds by Trent Words. It'll belong back to the Rams of VCU. Field goal shooting VCU in the second half. Four of 15, five of 13 for George Mason, who was just horrendous in the first half, hitting only nine shots the entire half. Here's Walker for the short jump. Absolutely smart basketball play right there by Walker. Had a great big screen, obviously, from Godwin. The defender leaned up against Godwin to, to feel his presence, and while he was doing so, Walker just went the opposite direction. Totally caught him off balance. Nice shot. Seven points for Walker, the freshman. Now a 6 nothing run by the Rams. Makes the margin back to eight. He's done a good job on skin tonight, keeping him from making buckets. Long shots at the 27 on Sunday. But he says, okay, Brad, there we go. Call me out, man. <laughs> he answered that one. But I'll show you, Mr. Darty. That's right. Let's see what he's got. He's showing us. A 27 huge point Sunday. Unbelievable. What an that place up. Yeah. Just 20 above his average. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Skin, the sophomore from Tacoma Park, Maryland, gets up in the air. Watch his soft touch. He's got good hands, good feel for the ball. I mean, his jumpers, he shot some deep jumpers tonight that didn't go in, but halfway down, good rotation on the ball. That's nice. Can't do much about that. Gets in deep, fades away. Dominic Jones, only a 67% free throw shooter, but nails the first one. His 13th point of the night. Just three away from his average of 16.2. Second leading scorer in the conference. By the way, those are his first points here in the second half. Which says a lot about the defense that George Mason is playing when they shut down the conference player of the year for, oh, yeah. for much of the second half. And they're scrambling. They get after it, play hard. Tough to play against George Mason. So VCU's done a great job putting himself in this position. Great crowd on hand here for the Colonial Athletic Association. 15th year they've had it here at the Richmond Coliseum. Tom Yeager, the commissioner, has
has done a wonderful job with this conference tournament. They call it Jamming on the James. The James River runs right through the edge of Richmond. And what a great tournament they've had again this year. Good attendance. A lot of excitement here in the city of Richmond. Talk about excitement. Here comes Mr. Skin. Woo! Good job. Great anticipation by Skin getting up in that passing lane. George made an errant pass, telegraphed that pass, and Skin was there to receive it. Good finish. All nine points for Tony Skin here coming in the second half. From the screen, Dominic Jones curling off. That's his play. He's going to shoot that one. Good pass. Big fella. Yeah! <laughs> Outstanding play by Dominic Jones. Dominic Jones just, that's his play. He comes off that curl, goes to the basket, and he rewards the big fella for staying home. He goes right by the defender. Butler's on his hip. Foul and the basket. Woo! Man. Big boy got up. Troy Godwin, the thunder dunk. Godwin has uh, trimmed down to a felt 295 this year. He was 330 a year ago. He said it, uh, he was a pretty good athlete, but he's much quicker, as you saw right there, with the 40 pounds off. So he can really roll. Six, 43, 36, 728 to play. Troy Godwin, three thunder dumps as the crowd come to life here in the Richmond Coliseum. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. Four spots will be filled in the NCAA tournament tonight. You and I trying to take on Missouri Valley against Southwest Missouri State. That is coming up as soon as we finish in the Colonial, guys. Well, this near-capacity crowd starting to sense what should be a great finish here, guys, at Richmond at the Richmond Coliseum. We'll take a look at our Nike game track. The margin is seven here with 7.28 to play. Yeah, awesome, outstanding job with John Lewis in the first half. He really went to work. Slowed down a little bit this half. Big pickup, Dominic Jones as well as Godwin. Both of those guys have been forces for VCU. Second half especially. The margin was up to 12 points early in the second half, down to two twice, and now it has grown back to seven here with 7.19 to play. Trying to get the basketball down deep. Good defense by George Mason. Really tightened up the gap. That's all they're going to give up. Good job. Good defense. Off the mark and hide him down with the rebound. Patriots seem to be more deliberate with their offense. I agree with that 100%. Get a good quality shot. Don't just, just settle. Don't settle for what they give you. Get what you want. You know, simulate your, your offense that you run every day in practice and try to get your shot out of it. Trying to get Tony Skin to set up the offense. Skin is being smothered by Walker outside, but drains the three. That was excellent de defense by B.A. Walker. He was all over Tony Skin. If he makes that shot fading away, then you just give it to him. All 12 of Tony Skin's points have come in the second half. And we got a chance to just visit with the basketball momentarily. <laughs> Ducky got pretty good reaction still, man. I'll tell you. you got all the <laughs> well, the feet aren't where they went there, but the hands are still there. <laughs> <laughs> the number one seed has won the conference tournament 11 times in 21 years, including the last two years in a row. DCU, the number one seed. Nice feet inside, and the foul will be called on Mickens. And Godwin will shoot a couple. Well, I like what, what this VCU team does. Once they have a hard scramble and get in trouble, they throw it to the big guy, and he bails them out each time. That's been that's three or four times this half. This half. And I've seen Godwin bail this basketball team out when there's been trouble. 
I mean, that was a great capture right there. Nick George did a good job, but he was he was off his feet. He had to make a pass, so he just threw it in the direction of Godwin, and he just gobbled it up, went hard to the hole. Now he's shooting two. Godwin has 10 points on the evening. Been shut out, though, from the free throw line. Not known for his free throw shooting, only 47% on the year, but he nails that one. Good looking touch for a big guy. Good stroke. All he's got to do to ever make more free throws is just to shoot it. Don't try to guide it. Don't try to take a little off. A couple good dribbles. He's got great hands. Straight up follow through. Nothing but nylon. Preseason first team all conference after spending a couple years at Allegheny Community College up in Maryland. He made the uh, second team conference, the second all conference team. A big disappointment from his team as he thought he should have been maybe defensive player of the year in the conference. He didn't make the first team, so a lot of frustration on Troy Godwin's part. Now, to see what kind of defender he is. Nice little easy dish across. To Mark Dave. I, I mean, that, that, you can't let any player get that deep into the paint. I know they're trying to let Godwin and Lewis play one-on-one, -on -one, but if, if Godwin can't keep Lewis up off that block and they need to send some help down to the double team, you can't let someone dribble that deep in. I mean, Lewis just had a little chip shot layup if he wanted it. Uncontested is, I think, the word that comes to Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, out shot. Oh, George, man, they just drilled that shot. They call him King George here in Richmond. The fans loving Nick George nails the shot for three. That type of shot catches you totally off guard. They've been to Godwin so many times over the past few plays inside. There's Godwin, good block. Now he got the foul. Fourth block of the night, but he also draws the foul. Or is called for the foul, I should say. He's just excellent off feet. George sets a nice screen. Godwin sets a nice screen. He kicks it down to George, and he just drills it. That was totally unexpected. That's what, that's what's tough. When you get a team that's starting to get a little hungrier, guys start to hunt for those shots all game. No one, you know, George hasn't shot a shot like that all game, so you don't expect that. Maybe you, defensively, you get a little lax play off of him, and he sticks it right into your eye. Mickens can't convert. He's only a 56% free throw shooter. The uh, also coming out of Allegheny College in Maryland. We told you he chose George Mason over Virginia Tech, VCU, and Duquesne. Fairly highly recruited out of Baltimore, Maryland. The 6'9", 225 junior. The bank is open, baby. They all count if they go in. Don't matter how you make them, as long as you make them. As long as it zips through the nylon, they're going to count the point. Final five minutes of the Colonial Athletic Association title game here at the Richmond Coliseum. Dangerous pass and is nearly picked off by Taylor, by Terry Reynolds, I should say. And they're going to say the ball will belong to George Mason. So Watch Reynolds. Reynolds just come knifing in there. Great hustle, and it goes off of Doles. Good call by Carl Hess. He originally called it the other way. Made his, yep, right off of it. Made a mistake, and he, he made up for it. You heard Digger Phelps talk about how big the turnovers were going to be tonight for VCU. He must be a mind reader. 14th turnover for the Rams of VCU, and it's costing them problems here in the final minutes of this one. George Mason can't convert, and Godwood hangs on like it's a pork chop. He will not let go of that basketball. This young man has come a long way in a year. Absolutely. Really works hard. It's fun to watch guys like that play. He's got the great size and just have to work a lot harder than everyone else. And to see the fruits of their labors is just, it's fun. I enjoy that. I talked to him earlier in the week and in this weekend at the tournament. He said, you know, he's, he's gained so much confidence in his game, and that's really showing on the floor. Oh, yeah. John Lewis got really deep, couldn't finish the layup. But it's great, you know, a guy like Godwin, that great big body, same thing for Jai Lewis. I mean, these aren't guys that are just going to get away with, with you know, a little bit of work and, and getting better. They're going to have to always work a lot harder than everyone else, and they're always going to be the, take a lot of heat, but uh, they're doing great. Those are the words of our expert analyst, Brad Darty. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us here at the Richmond Coliseum. Final four minutes and 38 seconds. VCU in the bonus now. They'll shoot one and one. The margin is six. Virginia Commonwealth number one seed in the white. The black is 
George Mason, the Patriots, had narrowed the margin to two after being behind by as many as 12 early in the second half. A lot of time left in this ball game. Patience, composure, taking care of that rock. That's what has to happen to win. Down the stretch. B.A. Walker, a true freshman from Onancock, Virginia, just 45 minutes north of Virginia Beach, playing in his first title game. Can't convert on that one, and the margin will stay at seven. It comes playing off the skin off those screens. That's hard to say, skin off those screens. <laughs> Nice motion offense now by the Patriots. Looking inside for the big guy. They get the ball inside, back and under, and uses the glass. That's a nice shot. Off balance, use the glass and the rim to protect the ball. Two on one break, the toss to George. He can't convert. And Walker saves the turnover and gets the timeout. That's an ill-advised pass. Obviously, Skin was right in the middle of all that dangerous pass. I don't believe Delta Airlines could have caught that pass. That was up in the air a little bit. The margin is five at 3.59 to play. We told you that the top seed has won the tournament 11 times in the last 21 years. The number three seed, which, which George Mason is in this one, has only won it once. That coming in 1998 when Richmond came from the third seed to win it. Well, Tuesday Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues with two more games on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, it's the Big East Women's Championship presented by State Farm. Boston College, who just upset UConn, will face the Rutgers West Virginia winner. And at 9 Eastern, Illinois, Chicago, and Wisconsin, Milwaukee will meet for the Horizon League Championship. It is Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And you and I get to go up to Bowling Green, Kentucky tomorrow night for the Sun Belt Conference title game. A nice little scrum up there in Bowling Green. Watch a little basketball up there in basketball country. They are playing off in the semifinals tonight. Five-point margin, less than four minutes to play. VCU's got to continue to be aggressive. He's trying to make plays. Control. Godwin, nice dish out here. George tries to get it inside. The ball hit. Can't hold. Here's Skin on the break against Dole. Gets the oh, basket and is foul. foul. I don't know how that shot went down. Dole's went for the foul to stop the play. Somehow, Skin just, he just wheeled the ball in the hole. You're going to see, watch a nice spin move, but one dribble maybe too many for Godwin, as well as one too many for George. Throw the ball back out top. He tries to bounce pass. Here comes Skin. There's the foul. Bumped. And he still got it in. Tony Skin, 14 points, all coming in the second half. The young man who played a year at Glenn College in Texas, set out a year at Hagerstown Community College and transferred to George Mason. Has become a major factor for them offensively. Had 27 last night and 14 thus far tonight. Nick George, a little long. Nice follow inside by Goals, and he is fouled. Looks like Butler had, had a hold of somebody by the arm there, got tied up. Kids just playing hard down there. Everybody's trying to get position and pull and root and gouge and create space. Michael Doles, we told you, he transferred from Wright State, had to sit out a year. The 2001-2002 season started 9 of 10 at the beginning of the year. And then B.A. Walker became such a factor offensively, but he has come off the bench and been a, an offensive threat in both the quarterfinals and semifinals. And he makes such a, a big deal out of the guys who start. 
but it, you, you need players who know their roles and come in and participate no matter what. A guy like Doles who comes in off the bench, he's just as important as a, as a Dominic Jones. And Brad, he had nine points and nine rebounds in the quarterfinal game. He had 12 points and four rebounds coming off the bench. That is a huge help to be able not only to come on and score, but to give those starters a breather. That's right. To continue the process, you know, the solid play, the execution offensively, being there defensively, it's huge. You saw the numbers, Virginia Commonwealth, they were the worst free throw shooting team in the league this year at 60%. Tenth out of ten teams, they have shot much better tonight. Doles tries to make a run to the basket, and he is fouled. I think Doles just figured out no one, whoever gets switched on to him is not going to be able to guard him in that post area, so he's going to the basket. That is the fourth personal foul on Tony Skin. And that man, Jim Laranega, can ill afford to lose him. He is the catalyst, the spark plug of the offense. Well, Coach Laranega gets up and is, exalts his team to rebound the ball. That last possession should have been captured by George Mason. It led to this opportunity right here, just through process of, of VCU getting that offensive rebound. And then the foul's created. Now you've got a foul and one less rebound for your basketball team. The margin now back to six points, but keep in mind, George Mason, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. They can get it done in a hurry. Back with the final three minutes and three seconds from the Richmond Coliseum in a moment. Reese Davis with you in the studios. Go to the Midcon again, semifinals. Valpo, the top seed against Missouri, Kansas City. Ali Verdeel, deal it to Dan Offwood for the easy one. And the artist again, known as the Homer Drews, are up by 10, apparently on their way to the title game. Merrill Andrews trying to lead the Bears into the big dance for the first time since 1999. They'll take on Northern Iowa as soon as we finish in Richmond, guys. Thank you very much, Reese. Take a look at the Capel family watching uh, the oldest boy at work. That is Jason on the far left who played at North Carolina with the Yankees hat on. That is not A-Rod. That is uh, Jason Capel, and that is dad to his left, Jeff Capel Jr. Of course, Jeff the third is a, the head coach at VCU. And there's a look at a 29-year-old. Youngest head coach in Division I college basketball. What a job he could possibly be taking his team to the NCAA tournament, the big dance, and only his second year as a head coach. That's unbelievable. That is outstanding. George Mason, after going one from 11 from the three in the first half, or three for four in the second. That foul called on B.A. Walker, and Davis will shoot three because it was from beyond the arc. Well, if he makes these three, it, it just snugs it right back up again. One shot opportunity to flip this basketball game, get it, get it to a tie. Neither one of these teams very, uh, very good from the free throw line. BCU was last in the conference. George Mason was fifth, averaging just over 68%. Yep, and that, that, that wins and loses basketball games, making free shots. They are two for seven tonight from the charity stripe, and that's that'll kill you down the wire here. And Jim Laranega knows that. Well, 0 for 2. Gotta have a little bit of confidence when you're shooting these things. Step in and make it. Still can make one. Still have an opportunity. There you go. Maybe two shots away. Good defensive stance right here. Come back and make a three. Two-point ball game. Let's see if VCU can handle this pressure. Five-point differential. Final two minutes and 40 seconds here at Richmond Coliseum. Number one seed trying to advance for the 12th time in 22 years here in the Colonial Athletic Association tournament, but only the second time in VCU school history. Once again, there's that save. And in trouble, they just throw it to Godwin, and he grabs it and puts it up. Couldn't, couldn't get, get it that time. Couldn't get it to roll. Pardon me, Brad, and Jay Lewis brings it down. Jai Lewis brings it down. George Payson desperately needs a bucket here. 
the pass. Oh, nice pass inside. Butler backs off and hits the short jumper. Boy, what a play. To get it within three. Man, it's getting tight, Doc. A little nervous over here. VCU's tournament resume, their RPI not bad at 62. The schedule strength 151. Key wins over Drexel and George Mason. Losses uh, by 20 points at UNC Wilmington, who's no slouch, by the way. They are the two-time, they were the two-time defending conference titleist. They lost at Hofstra. They won 13 of their last 15. How did Virginia Commonwealth get here to the title game? They shot lights out in the semifinals. Just really did a good job of, like I said, shooting that basketball, passing it around, distributing it evenly on the perimeter. Good little blend. Then they got it down low when they needed to to Godwin. Made some easy baskets himself, just like that. Did a great job just giving everybody a little bit of responsibility, and that little bit added up to a whole lot in a big win. Godwin, Jones, and Walker all had 14 points apiece. Five players in double figures last night in the semifinals. Jeff Capel, very pensive here in the final two minutes. Will he get to go to the big dance as a coach for the first time? Remember, he played for four years yep. as a point guard for Krzyzewski at Duke, and they played for the national championship when he was a sophomore. Oh, he's a heck of a point guard. I mean, he was a coach on the floor. Big guard, really physical, real strong. Took good care of the ball, smart. Final minute 35, Richmond Coliseum, Colonial Athletic Association. Godwin almost travels with the basketball, turns it over, and Lewis gives it back. Boy, what great hustle by all these young men getting after that basketball. Lewis diving after the ball, Cole's diving after the ball. That's what it's all about right there. Two teams that won a ticket to the big dance, hustling in the final minute and 30. If I'm the big guy, just like Godwin, I don't want to be handling that basketball at the top, you know, six feet from the top of the key. I want to catch it and move it as quickly as I can with a good crisp pass. I don't want to fool around and have to put it on the floor and, and, and drive it over to the opposite side to hand the ball off. We are at the Richmond Coliseum, over 9,000, a near sellout here in Richmond, Virginia, along with Brad Doherty, I'm Jerry Punch. 22nd renewal of the Colonial Athletic Association Men's College Basketball Tournament title game. Virginia Commonwealth, the top seed, regular season champion in white, and George Mason in the black. Our ESPN game track, skin with 14 points, four personal fouls, didn't take a seat. Every point he scored has come in the second half after having 27 points last night. Jones, conference player of the year, with 13 points. Big break right there for VCU, the exchange of of uh, turns gives it uh, reset to 35 second clock. So. VCU has been held without a field goal now for over three and a half minutes. See if Jones can change it. The short jumper doesn't fall. There's nice that guy ball again. Goal. There's that guy again. Mr. Doles, he is everywhere in this ball game. Playing big tonight. Michael Doles wants to go dancing. 7.6 rebounds for the sub from Richmond out of Meadowbrook High School. That's what we're talking about. He's just as valuable as anybody else on the court. Lewis plows his way underneath for the basket, and they will call the timeout. Three-point ball game, 51 seconds to go. It, it is what championship week is all about. 22 and 7 record for VCU, 21 and 8 for George Mason, and they are separated by just three points here with less than a minute to play. Coming up, the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Championship from the Sabbath Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Bob Carpenter and Jimmy Dyke standing by. The fifth seed, Southwest Missouri State Bears, upset number 15, Southern Illinois. Last night in the semifinals, 80-74. Merrill Andrews had 16 points to lead the Bears, and they will play against Northern Iowa, who beat Wichita State last night. That's coming up, the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference title game from the Sabbath Center. Both George Mason and VCU have one full timeout remaining. Both teams are in the double bonus. Possession arrow favors VCU. Final minute of the championship here at the Richmond Coliseum. Need some pressure, gonna need a foul here pretty soon. Stop that clock, send somebody to the line, try to get a miss.
Get up, play good hard defense. Maybe get a five second count. True freshman dribbling the ball here in the final minute of the title game. Fouling, fouling, fouling. the cucumber. Godwin. Now here is Walker outside. Launches the three, can't get it to fall. Godwin follows it, will not fall. And George Mason has it with 17 seconds to play, down by three. Well, if Godwin could have just got that basketball back outside, he got a great rebound, throw it back out, ball game's over. And the freshman Walker launched a three. Final timeout being used by Jim Laranaga, 54-year-old head coach at George Mason, who has taken his team to the postseason three times in six years, twice to the NCAA tournament, once to the NIT. Trying to get a shot, possibly to send this one into overtime. They were in overtime in the opening round, the quarterfinals. Well, I think you, you know, Tony Skin's going to come back in this ball game, obviously. Larinaga, who played for Dave Gavin in Providence, was an assistant coach for Terry Holland at Davidson. They won three Southern Conference titles, four trips to the NCAA tournament, two Final Four appearances when he was assistant at Virginia. And here's Jeff Capel. Let's listen in. He's going to run a double screen for Tony Skin. Just give him a little bit of space, you know, as time runs down and give him a chance to make that bug. I mean, I'm going to run it down to the last few seconds of the ball game so I can hit that shot and it goes into overtime if I'm George Mason. 54-51. VCU has one full timeout remaining. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow favors VCU. Skin is two for five from three-point range. Reynolds is two for two. Skin has the ball. He's a clock. Oh, man, what a tough shot. And he nailed oh, the three my goodness, and he may have been fouled. From 26 feet away. Me. It is a don't foul out. game. Oh, they don't foul. And here is Jones trying to make it, and oh, they fouled him. <laughs> foul inside with a minute six on uh, 1.6 seconds on the clock. Boy, if Jai Lewis could have just fallen backwards, put the, put the onus on the official to make that call. But when you're that big and they're coming at you, I know he just held his ground. Here's the, the three-point. We talked about Tony Skin taking the shot. I didn't think he'd take that tough a shot. No, he didn't get fouled, but he drilled it. Let's see this. Jai Lewis, step over there. Oh, just take the charge. Just take the charge. Jesse Pellarosa, a walk-on non-scholarship player who will be on scholarship, I promise you, next year. Has two points for tonight. His first time at the free throw line. He misses that one. You got to make the first one because, you know, this second one, you talk about that, 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 that window closes up real, real tight. When you miss that first one in the one in this two-shot opportunity. Only 67% from the charity stripe. Remember, he is a true freshman. This is pressure for a freshman playing in his first ever tournament title. Just game. won the ball game for him. And the ball is out of bounds and they're uh well, you got 1.2. They got a shot. <laughs> Catch it and stroke it. They advance the ball almost the length of the court in four tenths of a second, so they still have 1.2 seconds. You know, it's tournament time, so anything can Absolutely. happen. Hold on. They're trying to get Jeff Capel back off the floor here. 1.2, the toss inside to Lewis, the shot oh, man. is no good. And Virginia Commonwealth will advance for the first time since 1996, and the celebration begins.